I think uh, Amanda Palmer's first campaign was sixty thousand dollars, and um, Seth Godin's was just under, like, uh, probably around sixty or forty thousand dollars. So you don't have to go that large. You just really look at what you absolutely need financially and factor three things out besides that. Factor in your campaign fees, uh, which we'll talk about again, and factor in your perks, which are your cost of perks and your uh, cost of mail, because they will, you, you have to pay for those. Um, so after you're done your research and your creation, you choose your platform, whether it's Kickstarter, Indiegogo, I recommend those two. GoFundMe is really great, but that's, that's more for the medical, like, I'm having a hardship and need to pay my medical bills, or um, Johnny got hit by a car and needs uh, money for his broken arm. Like GoFundMe is probably not the platform for you. So stick with maybe Kickstarter or Indiegogo of those two choices. Once you choose that, build your community, get your rally your people. Um, there's the, I can't remember who the guy's name is, but he said you basically need a thousand true fans. You don't need a thousand true fans, a hundred good people will do, 50 really awesome people will be better. And the reason for that is you want to build your campaign and you want to find who those people in your community, your fans, your friends, and your family really support you and get behind you. Whether it's for five dollars or have no problem <coughs> like me and we'll talk about you every day of the week. And you find those people early and you share the campaign with them before it launches because both platforms will give you a preview window period and you get their feedback and you ask them right up front, how much can you do? Don't be shy. And then you launch your campaign and you work your ass off for 30 days, or 40 days, or 60 days, however long your campaign is. And then you have one of two options, your campaign failed. Uh, and if you're on Indiegogo and your campaign failed at 80% or 90%, good. You can figure out a way to, to scale everything down a little bit and make that work. If it failed on Kickstarter, you have just spent 45 to 60 days working your ass off for nothing. Uh, if it's successful, Start fulfilling your rewards. Start communicating with your people. Just because the crowdfunding campaign clock stopped, your campaign still goes on. You still have to update. You still have to communicate. It's not thank you for your money and you walk away. You still have stuff that you have to deliver. And this is your opportunity as an artist to start building that fan base of people. Um, because in, in statistics wise, a successful campaign will be made up of 30 to 40% of people you know, but 60% complete strangers. Um, and the reason that number is important is that 60% new people to you. So that's, that's new, that's new like, people to buy your books, new people to upsell on old books, new people that will support you in future projects if you treat them well. This is a really good opportunity to just start building that thing that makes you valuable to any publisher if you choose to go to a publisher or valuable to yourself as a self-publisher because that's your resources of income. 60 and 30 is 90%, plus another 10%. That's your, I know you tangentially. Like I know Isolde, and Isolde probably knows one person, so they've heard of me before, but not all the way. So this is some did you knows. 60% of all campaigns fail. Why? Majority of it are bad planning, majority of it, like myself, overreaching. Uh, there's an Icarus complex, they're like, I could do it, and not realize the work or the effort or the community that you have to build. The average campaign raises, raises less than $10,000 to a to a large lack of pre-launch planning. Um, and I'm gonna go into some pre-launch planning in a minute, but basically what that means is you can't just throw up a campaign in two days and run it. I mean, you can, it's gonna fail, unless you're somebody that has a huge community behind you and you can just push a button and go. But even then, you're gonna take a little bit of time to get off the ground. 64% of campaigns launched on a Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, I'm a big proponent of Monday and Tuesday, and the reason for Monday and Tuesday is people are starting the week, they're getting <coughs> optimistic for things to come on a Monday, so do it Monday night or Tuesday day. That's that period of time where people aren't worried about payday, they're not worried about the weekend. Your weekends are going to kind of be a plummeting period for you. You're not going to get a lot of traffic, so that's your kind of building awareness and community aspect. The average campaign duration is about 38 days, and for me, I recommend no more than 40, but no less than 30. And the reason for that is less than 30, there's really not a lot of time. You got a lot of build up. You have four phases during the middle of your campaign. Your first week, your second week, your third, and your fourth. Your first and last week are your strongest weeks financially. As you can see by the last one, that'll be about 60%, 66% of your total funding. And your middle period is your lull. And then the, the comfortable lull in the middle is about two weeks. So A, you don't lose your mind, and B, you don't lose momentum. And then your average campaign video is about three minutes, 45 seconds, or just about three minutes and a half. Uh, I personally figured out after that, people start losing attention. 
we, we have a society where a majority of people are now just give me quick information and get out of the way. If you get really long-winded and you don't have um, their attention, you've just lost them and they're going to the next campaign and you're competing with thousands and thousands and thousands of campaigns out there. So how do you avoid some of these pitfalls? Uh, you plan ahead. You talk to somebody like me who's done campaigns before, you get advice, you do your research, you do your homework. Um, we live in a beautiful age today where I, with no film degree and never going to school, figured out how to make a feature length film just by using the internet. There's tons of free resources out there if you're willing to do the work. There's tons of people like me out there who's willing to help you for uh, no fee or fee, depending on how experienced or they are, how much they just like you or believe in your product. Um, crowdsource your audience. If you are an established author or up and coming author, you have people who support you, whether it's the five friends in your writing group or the hundred people that you've built along the way. Go to those people and talk to them early. Get them rallied up. Um, you're also going to offer perks that can be fulfilled during the campaign. Those perks could be anything from reading a chapter of my book that's upcoming to here's a free digital copy of my last book to I'm going to give you a preview of the book in e-form before it comes out. There's things that you could do during the life of your campaign that people can stay excited about. And then be adaptable. Uh, the real reason that you have to be adaptable is that you, this is a science, but it's also science is completely thrown out the window. A lot of this is math and numbers, but you have to be, stay completely fluid because several things could happen. You could hit your campaign goal in your first week and your 30 day plan goes to crap because then it's just about building the momentum because just because you hit your goal, it doesn't stop. You have to keep going and you have to keep building. I'm talking really fast. I'm going through a lot in 20 minutes. Um, Breathe. I don't do that well. <laughs> <laughs> but you could also have things that will happen where statistically you want to reach your 30% goal in the first week, the first six to seven days. Um, that goes back to that 66% first week and last week numbers. Those things have what's called the green bar effect. If you've ever looked at Kickstarter or Indiegogo, they have your big number, which is your goal, and how much you've raised, but below that is a green bar. And people look that. They don't look at how much you've raised so far versus how much you have. They don't even look at that big number of what your goal is. They go, that green bar is not full all the way, so I don't think a lot of people like this. Or they go, wow, it's really full, so I want to make it fuller. So it's, it's a really weird psychology that goes into that play. Sort of jump on the bandwagon kind of thing. Absolutely. Nobody wants to be the first person on the dance floor. Nobody wants to be the last one on the dance floor. Um, so, so, like, does it make sense to uh, start with some money already in the can. Absolutely. Pre-commitment pre contributions. I, I am a big proponent, and, and Brooke can probably attest to this, and so can Anne. I will start day one with 30%. Um, and because I have already pre-primed my pump, I've gone to my people, I'm like, what can you do? What can, I am not shy, as you can tell, by bringing the coffee guy over and giving you free coffee. I will talk to anybody that's willing to listen, and my reason for doing that is I want to have the most success up front to try to save me a headache later on. So talk to your community. If you've got um, friends and family that might have a little bit deep pockets that like you a little bit, give them the bigger number. Say, you know what, $1,000 up front might really, really help me out. Um, this is, again, basic math. Your average contribution is between $25 and $50. So if you take your campaign goal, plus your perks, plus your fees, divide that by 30, that'll tell you exactly about how many people that you need to bring into the campaign through the life of the campaign. Take that, take 66%, divide it in half, and that'll tell you exactly what you need to do up front. Um, again, that's math that you have to be adaptable for because some people that you're counting on for 30 might give you five. Some people that you're counting on for 30 might give you 100. You can't gauge that right off the bat, but numbers give you a safe bet to kind of run with. So I put this up there because uh, it was kind of in, in the bio, and it's a little bit misleading. How to launch a successful campaign in 30 days? You can't. <laughs> 30 days of pre-planning before, 30 days of running your campaign, it's 60 days. 15 days of pre-planning, 30 days of campaign, 15 days of post, 60 days. 45 to 60 days is about the safe window for you to have a campaign planned and launched and completed. <coughs> so let's talk about the, the aspects of it. Uh, you need a pitch video and your campaign text. Um, both Indiegogo and Kickstarter have the video aspect, which is huge. Um, campaigns that launched with a pitch video are 115 more percent, 115 percent more compared, raise more than 
ones without a pitch video. Uh, mathematically, that's incorrect. We know we can't do more than 100%, but every single video helps. If it's just a static image of a book cover or your face, nobody has a reason to buy and they want to understand. Also, nobody wants to read nowadays, and they don't want to read until you've hooked them in. So they'll read your perks. They might, if they're really, really worried about the numbers, they might read some of the text at the bottom, but they want to get to know you, and this is your chance to talk to them. This is your chance to stand in front of them and say, here's what I'm about, here's why I'm passionate, here's why you should help me. Um, so keep your video around three minutes. Answer your who, what, when, where, and why, and how. Um, who you are what you're raising the money for, when that's going to come out, where they can find it, why they should contribute, and how they can help you. Um, and that's kind of the order that you want to do those questions in because it's kind of the natural progress of question, people asking you, what about this campaign? And then tell your story. Are you an author with three books? Are you a first time <coughs> author? Are you really excited? Or are you just kind of, uh, this is your chance to get people to learn who you are and learn why they should contribute to you. Your friends and family know that 60% who doesn't know you, and even that 10% who kind of knows you a little bit, they want to learn about you and they want to figure out how to support you. So include a strong call to action. A call to action is when they've contributed, ask them to tweet, ask them to share. If you've got something for them to do after they've helped you out, they're more inclined to stay on board. And a lot of this is keeping momentum. If you could keep people engaged through the life of your campaign, they'll work for you. And then lastly, but not least in your campaign, express gratitude. You appreciate people. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me speak. Thank you for recording my talk. Thank you for showing up when you did. Those things in the video, along with going through your campaign, and every time somebody contributes, thanking them. 